Hi guys, in this video we're going to have a look at volume of prisms. So the formula for the uh, volume of a prism is written here. It's the area of the cross section times by the length. Now the cross section is the uh, 2D, 2D shape that will run all the way through the prism. So for example, in this one here, this rectangle here, this five by six rectangle, runs all the way through the shape. So if I was to chop that prism in anywhere along uh, these 10 centimeters, that rectangle would be always the same throughout. Likewise here, this triangle, if I was to chop this triangular prism anywhere, that triangle would be constant all the way throughout. So that's what I mean when I say the cross section it's the 2D shape that goes all the way through the shape. Now, of course, with a cuboid, this rectangle goes through the whole shape. This rectangle going that way will go through the whole shape. And, of course, the top um, rectangle will also go through the whole shape. So this one actually has three uh, cross sections. But we'll talk about that in a little while. Okay, so we've got a few things to have a look at. We'll have a look at cuboids, triangular prisms, uh, trapezoidals, and cylinders. And we're also going to have a look at how we go back to find lengths if we're given the volume of that particular shape. So let's get started. So the first one here is a cuboid. So again, I want the area of the cross section. So I'm going to stick with this rectangle. I'm just going to shade it in just so you can see which one I'm referring to. Okay, so that rectangle, as I said, goes all the way through the shape, so I need to work out the area of that. So if you haven't already looked at my uh, area of 2D shapes video, definitely have a look at that, just to brush up on some of the formulas. But quite simply, to work out the area of a rectangle is the base times the height. So I'm going to put V for volume, and the 6 times by the 5, that's going to give me the area of the cross section and then I'm going to times it by the length which is just how long that rectangle goes through the shape which in this case is 10. So area of the cross section would be 6 times 5 which is 30 times by the length which is 10. Of course you can do that in one go if you wish but you'll end up with 300 and be careful with the units these are all in centimetres, and because it's volume, it's centimetres cubed. So make sure you remember that little cubed bit there. Now, as I said, with a cuboid, this is a cross section, but this is also a cross section. So you could have done the area of this rectangle, which would have been 10, and then obviously the height is 5. So 10 times 5 is 50, times by 6 also gets you 300. Or you could have used the top and done uh, 6 times 10, which is 60, and then times by 5, which again gets you 300. But that's the only time you can have that, because obviously a cuboid has those three different cross sections. Um, OK, let's move on then. So in this case, again a cuboid, but I've been given the volume, and I need to work out this missing length. So it's no different. We're going to imagine we have the cross section. So I'm going to stick with this one here. But again, because it's a cuboid, you could have had either this side or the top. And I'm going to write down the formula. Well, the formula, just as we did up there, for the volume was the area of the cross section. So that would have been the base, which is x times by the height, which is 4. So x times by 4, and then times by the length, which would have been 13. And then all I'm going to do, slightly different to this, is just substitute the volume in. So I know the volume is 468, which equals the x times the 4 times the 13. There's different ways you can solve it, but I'm a massive fan of the flowchart in this situation just to avoid any confusion. So the flowchart, if you haven't seen it, we just start off with x and we say, okay, what do I do to it? Well, we times it by 4. That gives us the area of the cross section. Then what do we do to it? Well, we times it by 13. And then what do we get? Well, we get the volume, which is 468. So all I've done with the flowchart there is just write out what this um, equation says. And then to go back and find out what x is, we just do the inverse. And whatever we do, we do the opposite. So times 13 becomes divide 13. Times 4 becomes divide by 4. And we get back to x. 
So let's just get the old calculator out and have a look. So we've got 468 divided by 13 uh, divided by 4 and we get 9, so 9 centimetres. Now whenever you're doing this sort of question, go back and double check your work. Okay, so if we think x is 9, it'd be 9 times 4 times 13 gives us the volume. Yep, that's correct. Okay, so always double check your answers. Okay, so there's the easy ones. Now let's have a go at something slightly trickier. No difference to the formula, we're still going to work out the area of the cross section. So the area of the cross section is going to be this triangle because the triangle is constant throughout the whole shape. So I need to work out the area of a triangle. Um, so the volume will equal the base, which is 7, times by the height of the triangle, which is 4, and don't forget you half it. So that's going to give me the area of the triangle, base times the height and half it. And then we times it by the length, which is 10. Okay, so 7 times 4 is 28. We're going to half it to get 14. So it's 14 is the area of the cross section times by 10. So the volume equals 140. And again, centimeters cubed. So just remember your units. Okay, so area of the cross section, and then we times it by the length. And just like we did over here, Exactly the same, I've got a triangular prism here. I've been told the volume, and in this case, I want to find out what the length of the base is. So exactly the same thing I did over here. I'm going to substitute it into my formula. So the volume, I'll call it V still, we'll substitute it in a minute, is going to be the base. Well, we don't know that, that's still B, times by the height of the triangle, because this is the area of the cross section, remember. So I'm just going to shade that in briefly. Okay, so the area of the triangle, so it's the base, we don't know, times by the height of the triangle, which is 5. And we're going to divide it by 2. And then we're going to times it by the length, which in this case is 12, and that's going to give us the volume. And we know the volume is 180. So 180 equals B times 5 divided by 2 times by 12. And just like I did over here, I'm just going to flowchart that to avoid making any silly mistakes. So I've got my B, I times it by 5, I then divide by 2, I then times by 12, and I get 180. So go back, 180, uh, that should be times 12, which means that you go backwards, we divide by 12. That's a divide by 2, which means I times by 2. And that's a times 5, which means I divide by 5, and we get back to B. Let's have a look what that is. So 180 divided by 12, which is 15, times by 2, which is 30, divided by 5, which tells me the base is 6. And just like I said over here, check your work. So if we think the base is 6, let's work out the area of the cross section. So base times height, so 6 times 5, divided by 2 is 15, times that by 12. Yes, we get 180, so that's correct. Okay, so we've got the easy cuboids, we're done triangular the prisms, let's have a go, well, remember your units, six centimetres, uh, let's have a go at something slightly trickier. So in this case, I have a cross section that is a trapezium, uh, which means that this is called a trapezoidal, if it's in a prism. I love that word. Okay, so just like before, we're going to work out the area of the cross section because this trapezium is constant throughout the whole shape. And again, if you are unsure of these, just make sure you check out the video uh, on the uh, area of 2D shapes. But if you have done that, you shouldn't have to do it. So the volume will equal, we add the parallel sides. I'm going to work out the area of the trapezium. So I add the parallel sides, which is in this case, two add four. Okay, got to do that first. Then you times it by the height of the trapezium, which in this case is 5, and then you need to divide it by 2. So that's going to tell me the area of the cross section, and I just times it by the length, which in this case is 8. Okie dokie, so let's work this out then. So 2 add 4 is 6, uh, times by 5 is 30. Divided by 2 is 15. 15 times 8 is 120. So the volume there is 120. And again, centimetres 
cubed. Excellent. Okie dokie. And just like before, this time I'm going to go back and work out a missing length when I'm told the volume. So exactly the same thing. We're going to substitute it in. So the volume will equal the area of the cross section, which again in this case is a trapezium. So I need to add the parallel sides. So that's going to give me the x plus the 7 times it by the height. Now this is just a right angle trapezium, not a problem. So the height of this is actually 6, which is quite handy. Divide that by 2. So there's the area of the cross section. And I'm going to times that by 9. Okie dokie. So let's do the old flow chart. So I'm going to start off with x. I'm going to add 7 because that's the first thing I'm going to do. It's in brackets. Then I'm going to times it by the height, which is 6. Then I'm going to divide it by 2. Then I'm going to times it by 9. And it's going to give me the volume, which is 270. Going backwards, 270. Oh, I keep forgetting to do times. It's times 9, which means this is divide by 9. That's divide by 2, so the opposite is times 2. Times 6, opposite, divide 6. Add 7, opposite, take away 7. And we come back to x. So I'm going to cheat and use a calculator for this one. So 270 divided by 9. Oh, well, actually, it's not too bad. Uh, times by 2 divided by 6. And then take away 7. Leaves us with the answer of 3 centimetres. We're in centimetres. And again, just check it. So we can do this. 7 add 3 is 10 times by 6 is 60, half it to get 30, 30 times 9, yep, is 270 centimetres. That should be cubed. Excellent. Okay, and the last one we're going to have a look at now is a cylinder, but it's no different to the rest, but this time the cross section is a circle. So we're going to work out the area of the circle. Well, I'm told the radius is 5, so to work out the volume, do the area of the circle, which is pi times 5 squared, okay, which is the area of the circle, and then times by 18. Now, 5 squared is 25, so that would be pi times 25 times by 18. Now, it might ask you to leave this in terms of pi, so pi times 25 times 18. So in terms of pi, it would just be 450 pi. OK. But of course, it might want it as a decimal. So just press the SD button and that'd be 1413.7166. So on, so forth. I'll round it to one decimal place. But of course, if the question asks you to round it to something different, just make sure you do that. So the 0.7 is one decimal place. One tells us to round down. So it stays as a seven centimeters cubed. Excellent. So there's the volume of the cylinder. And just like we've done with all the other examples, we're now gonna go backwards and we're gonna find out what the radius is. So write out the formula. So we've got the volume and that's gonna equal pi times the radius. Well, we don't know what the radius is, so I'm gonna keep that as R squared and then times that by the length there which we're told is 12 and it's just a straight up flow chart again i'm going to start off with my r i'm going to square it just put sq for square and then i'm going to times it by pi i'm then going to times it by 12 and i'm going to get the volume of 1452 pi go backwards and instead of times in by 12, I'm going to divide by 12. Instead of times in pi, I'm going to divide by pi. And instead of squaring a number, the opposite of that is square rooting. And you should get back to the radius. So let's have a look. 1452 pi. Yep, okay, let's divide that by 12. So far, so good. 
divide that by pi. Yep, 121. Um, you can just do the square root button and then 121, or if you've already got 121 there like I'm doing, you can just do the square root button and use the answer button, which just uses your previous answer on the calculator to press equals, and R comes out at 11 um, centimetres. So let's just check that. Pi times 11 squared is the area of the circle times by 12, yeah, 1,452 pi. Excellent. Okay, so hopefully that helps with uh, volume of prisms, guys. Just remember that formula, area of the cross-section times by the length. And if you need to find out a missing length, just substitute everything into the formula and then just use your flow chart to go backwards. So hopefully that helps. Thanks for watching. <laughs>